13 tips for an awesome virtual presentation. I'm Chris. And Columbus. And Columbus, why are you on a Zoom call for this video? Because we're social distancing. Oh, that's right. But wait, I don't think stuffed pandas can get humans sick. Oh, okay. Yeah, well why don't you join me since you're, since you're right here. And so speaking of social distancing, while many of us are social distancing in this time, many more of us are giving presentations over virtual means like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, WebEx. And so there's a lot of things that apply from regular presentations that apply to virtual presentations, but there's also a lot of things that need to be thought about differently, in particular, because you're not in the same room. So you can't read and see whether people are understanding you. You can't tell whether they're asleep or not. And so in this video, we're gonna give you 30 13 tips to help you make your virtual presentations even more awesome here on the Office Survival Guide. Tip number one, you need to be engaging, even more engaging than in an in-person presentation. Why? Because your entire audience has some kind of digital device that they're looking at to be in this meeting that can distract them with emails, with Twitter, who knows, maybe even with Facebook. And so you have to keep up the excitement and the enthusiasm twice as much as you have to do in person to make sure you're keeping people's attention during your presentation. And while it may feel cheesy to you to amp up your energy excitement twice as much, trust me, the digital medium subtracts about four times the energy and excitement from you. Tip number two, be extra organized. Why is it important to be organized? Well, because the more structured and direct your presentation is, the better chance that people are actually gonna listen to it and receive it. I mentioned before that people get distracted, particularly during virtual presentations, maybe not even with the ding of their phone, but maybe other people around the house, and you wanna make sure when they come back and pay attention to your presentation again, they know where you are, and they also feel like you're making progress through your presentation. So as you walk through your presentation, tell them you're in step number two of 13. For example, bring that table of contents back up, move through it so that the people watching your presentation know progress is being made. Tip number three, if you're using slides, keep the slides very simple. Think big pictures and very little words. If you put words on the slide, people are going to be trying to read the words on the slide. And people who are listening or paying attention to your presentation can only do one thing at a time, either read your slide or listen to you. So you wanna make sure the words are few so that when you bring that slide up, you can essentially read those few words very quickly so that your audience isn't trying to read some big blog of text because if they're reading a big Big block of text, they are not paying attention to a word that you're actually saying. And those pictures that you use, make sure they're pictures that actually help you make your point, not just random clip art. If it's random clip art on the slide, people are gonna wonder, why is that there? But the pictures that you use should make people go and say, oh, this helps me make that more clear. For example, it'd be really weird if I had a picture back here of a random paper clip, but no, it's the Office Survival Guide logo. That's simple. Now, if you do have some big block of text on your slide, something like a quote from a customer or a quote from a book, don't just talk at it while it's there. If you want them to actually read it, then go ahead and read it. If it's three lines, read it aloud so that way they can read and listen to you at the same time. Tip number four, point to your slides virtually. When you're in person, you can point with your hand, you can point with a laser pointer, you can even point with something like this, but when you're presenting virtually, people don't know what part of the slide you're talking to. If it's a really busy slide, you don't want people wondering what part of it you're talking to. If you're referencing the picture on the left, on the right, if they should look at the graph on the bottom. So go ahead and walk them through that. You can say, hey, I'd like to call your attention to the picture in the upper left. This is a picture of a satellite in space, and now I'd like to call your attention to the picture in the lower right. That's the picture of the new moat we're gonna put around the castle with the robotic alligators. And really this point is just expanding the organized part of it, being organized, make sure that you're not just walking them through the table of contents and what slide you're on, but then you're actually walking them through the slides to help them really understand what part of the present days you're on and what you're talking about. Number five, connect with the humans in the room or perhaps even the stuffed pandas in the room. Now you're not in a physical room, but you're in almost a virtual room and realize you are actually talking to actual people. And so you can 
reference people on the call or in the meeting by name and say, hey, Columbus, I'm really glad you joined us. Or you can ask them a question or you can say, hey, Columbus, as you mentioned the other day, and that'll make them feel that human connection like it's really a meeting they should be paying attention to rather than just a monologue you're giving that they can easily tune out. The best in-person presentations in the office are the ones that are essentially facilitated conversations because generally in an office, it's not like a conference presentation where you're presenting to 5,000 people and questions are at the end. You are presenting so that people can absorb their information, ask questions when they have them. And so make sure that you're approaching your presentation in that way, a facilitated conversation with actual people. Tip number six, speaking of handling questions, let's talk about that now. So handling questions depends on what type of meeting it is. Now, it, there are big virtual meetings that might have 5,000 attendees. If you're doing a big virtual town hall like that, then you might very well want to say, take questions at the end. And in that case, you'll want to do something to mute everybody's microphone, have them ask questions during the chat. That's totally fine for something like that. Now, if you're having a medium-sized virtual meeting, like a board meeting or a working group meeting or kind of like a medium-sized team meeting, well, then you should kind of pause every once in a while for questions. And the way that looks is every few slides, you can just pause and you can say, hey, I'm going to pause here for a few seconds if anybody has any questions. Okay, since there are no questions, I'll just go ahead and continue. That's what that looks like. Don't make it where you stop every slide and say, are there any questions? Or definitely don't do it where you go 10 slides and then say, okay, are there any questions here? Because people will be listening and say, well, I, I didn't have any questions before, but the fact you've only paused on this slide to ask for questions makes me think, hmm, maybe I should have questions. Something is up on this slide. And now if you're having a small virtual meeting, a meeting where you can see your whole team on the same screen, then you can ask the question, hey, is this all making sense? And if you see everybody's head go, mm, then you can just kind of keep on going. But again, if you ask the question, hey, does anybody have any questions? It's hard for the room to respond and say, no, there's no questions when everybody's kind of on mute and they're just sitting there. It's a weird question to ask on a virtual meeting. Tip number seven, let's talk about some microphone tips. And no, you don't want to use a microphone like this, but it was just a good prop to start number seven. What you'll really want to use if you're doing a lot of virtual meetings is you'll want to get a good headset microphone, something you can put on your head that has an earpiece and a microphone, because if you get the microphone close to your mouth, it'll sound much better than the microphone on your phone, some far part away, much better than the microphone in your laptop as well, because these microphones are just not that good, and also they are far get a good headset. You can get wired headsets, you can get wireless headsets. There are a lot of different options. But do look at something that brings the microphone close to your mouth, not something that has the microphone way back here on the headset. Oh, and just one microphone pro tip on many of these virtual presentation apps, if there's somebody that has like an open mic, meaning they didn't mute themselves and you can hear their dogs barking or you can hear them talking in the background, you don't have to just say, hey, there's an open mic, can somebody mute it? You can generally actually see who that is and most of these virtual presentation apps actually have a way that you can mute that person or even mute everybody. So find those options and use them when somebody has an open mic. Mic. Tip number eight, camera tips. The other part of a virtual meeting other than a microphone is the camera. So first things first, put the camera at eye level. Don't put the camera too high. Don't put the camera too low. Nobody wants to be looking up at your nose and you don't want to be looking up at the camera. If you're using a, like a laptop computer, you know, you've seen a lot of people do this where they have their computer, the camera's right here. They put the computer on their desk and it's too low. They're looking down at it. That's no good. What can you do? You can put your computer up on a box or something like that to raise it up during your virtual meeting. If you're using a phone, one of the things I like to do, actually you can get stands to hold your phone. I've got this little stand right here. So when I'm having a virtual meeting, if I'm using my phone, then I can just have that right up here and you can see the camera is right at my eye level. Now when you're talking, you should talk to the camera and you should look at the camera. Why should you look at the camera? 
camera because it will make the viewer actually feel like you are looking at them. If you're looking somewhere else like this, or you're looking down like this the whole time, people will feel like you're not actually talking to them. This is actually kind of a hard skill to get used to, and so if you find yourself having a challenge in it, you can actually put like a post-it note next to your camera to give yourself a reminder and say, look here. Now, if you are having to like look at some like talking notes or things like that that you've made, then at least alternate between looking at the camera and looking at your notes and looking back at the camera. People will realize you're kind of looking at things, but as long as you look in this direction every once in a while, people will feel like you're actually looking at them. You should also position the camera that you see yourself from the chest or waist up. That's most natural because that's how we see newscasters, that's how we see people on TV. Do not position it so that the only thing you see is your face. That is really weird and it's a little too close, right? Get back a little bit, get some social distance and some camera distance. And also, you know, you've seen people like this, don't be down here with just the head at the bottom of the video. You'll also want to position your camera in a place that you get good lighting. Now right now to do this video, I've actually got a camera light right here because I do a lot of YouTube videos. Top down lighting is the worst because uh, it gives you a lot of shadows. Actually the worst worst is positioning like a window behind you because then you get a lot of bright light coming in into the camera and nobody can see you. You look entirely like a ghost or a shadow. So the best Best place is to put yourself looking into a window with the back of the camera to the window and then kind of like the camera pointing at you so you get some sun from the window on your face to brighten yourself up. If you don't have that, then find like a table lamp or a desk lamp and put that behind the camera and then yourself here camera, lamp, lamp, camera, you, so that you're getting that light on your face that shines in the same direction as the camera, that'll help fill you in and make you not look like a raccoon. You can see if I turn this light off, it doesn't look quite as good anymore. I get these dark circle under my eyes, I get the five o'clock shadow, so having some light that shines on you really helpful, and it doesn't have to be professional lighting. You also want to position yourself with a clean background, something that's not too messy. Many apps, Zoom included, you can actually do virtual backgrounds. If it's a professional meeting, make sure it's a professional background, right? Don't put yourself on the beach or an In-N-Out burger. While those may be great conversation starters, use something professional. Perhaps your company logo might make a good virtual background. Now, if you really can't find any good place around your office, your living room to do it, consider your kitchen. Consider your kitchen counter. It's a nice, tall place. You can put your laptop or your phone there, and yes, you can totally present from your kitchen because a kitchen's actually sometimes some of the cleanest and most regular places, and if that requires you to stand during your presentation, well, it might actually make you more exciting and enthusiastic because that's why we stand for in-person presentations. It's totally fine to stand for a virtual presentation, and actually, if it's an important one, you might want to do it so that you sound more enthusiastic and exciting. Tip number nine, avoid unnecessary tech distractions. If you're using your phone to do your presentation, turn off all the notifications. If you're using your computer, turn off your email client. Turn off anything that's going to go bing, 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 bong, 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 so that when you're giving your presentation, you can give all of your focus to that. Number 10, if you're sharing something, like you're sharing a presentation, you're sharing slides, Consider just sharing the application. Consider just sharing PowerPoint. Consider just sharing uh, Adobe Acrobat. If you share your whole desktop, you might inadvertently share or show things to the audience that you don't really want them to see, particularly if you didn't turn off your email notifications like I talked about before, you might get an email pop up with a subject that you didn't want people to really see you were getting that email. A pro tip, if you're trying to share a lot of different things, instead of opening 10 different attachments, consider putting all of them in one Adobe PDF and then just opening that single PDF that you've already put everything that you need for that meeting in. Tip number 11, it really helps to have multiple monitors. I like using multiple monitors. I will have one for Zoom and Microsoft Teams or WebEx, whatever 
the sharing application I'm using is, and then I'll have the second one for my PowerPoint that I'm sharing. That way it's pretty easy for me to see the full screen of what's going on. And then the second screen, I can see everything from the virtual meeting application. And then if you've got notes for slides, it's hard to then use presenter view. You'd really need like a third monitor for that. In that case, I just like to print out my notes that I'm doing. If I'm giving a presentation, I'll have notes like this. They're pretty easy to just kind of glance down and glance back up. And also if I've got things that I really want to say, then actually I just add highlights into those so that I can call myself out and say, hey, that's really important. Tip number 12, you can even use multiple devices. So I like to connect to meetings with my phone and my headset that I'm using to transmit my voice and listen. And then I like to connect on my computer to actually do the sharing. Why? It helps it easier. I find to mute and unmute from my phone, makes it less complicated. And then I find when I'm sharing slides and doing all of that, that's a lot easier from a desktop computer. So consider using multiple devices to do your talking and and your slide sharing. Tip number 13, test everything and make sure it works before your meeting. I always tell people for in-person meetings to go to the room or go to the venue that they're gonna present and make sure before the presentation that it all works. Same thing applies for virtual presentations. Make sure your microphone works, make sure your headset works, make sure you can connect, make sure your sharing works, make sure all your tech works because it's really hard to fix that if it doesn't work when you're right away trying to give the presentation. It's so so much more stressful trying to make it work right in the heat of the moment. Now, if you're like Columbus and I, and the reason why you're giving virtual presentations is because you're working remotely from home, well, then you might enjoy watching my video right here about tips for effective working from home and effective teleworking. Check that out to level up your remote work game.